Hey guys, it's Rick Waza here, and welcome back to another Thursday live stream where, yes, we'll be talking you through this week's news, what's happening in the game, you know, what's happening at the top end of the game, what the top guys are doing, things like that. Uh, we're also going to talk about a few subjects, as we always do. I'm going to talk about a bot that I've used more and more recently. Still struggling a bit, but I can feel it coming on. I can feel it getting easier and easier as the more I use it. And I think it's going to be so powerful um, once I've sort of got this sort of method down. I'm going to have a go of it today on uh, one of our war attacks, just for a bit of fun. And then we're going to attack some random bases and sort of uh, see why I attack like that and how I've been using it and what to look for things like that um, and also I've been having a few requests uh, from an old video that I did in 2020 uh, to do a more up to date version so I thought we'd do a more up to date version of that uh, and then compare Compare it to the old scores uh, that I gave to these bots and uh, and compare it and see how that's changed over the years. So you must have been seeing my uh, videos I've been doing with techs, uh, been rating all the bots. That's the idea with that. We're going to rate all the bots and then next year we're going to come back and see how things have changed. How the meta's changed these bots and how bots have fell away from the meta and come back and... How they rate differently. And we're going to do similar tonight as well. So, uh, yeah, all that is to come. Uh, but, yeah, as usual, guys, if you've got any questions, anything you want to know, stick it in the chat. I'll do my best to answer it. But let's see who we've got in the chat tonight. So, we have got uh, Grind Time, who's first. Thanks for being a member, as always. Uh, Penny Lancaster and Jason Rowley. Calvin and William Childbrick. Guess what? Sunstreak was a slash crystals coming your way for being the first five in the chat. And I've got a sneaky suspicion those first five were in the chat because they are subscribed. Because for some weird reason, uh, my notification wasn't coming through to Discord. So maybe you're in my Discord and getting notifications, but not actually subscribe. But don't forget, guys, go and, go and subscribe to all your content creators, guys. It just helps them sort of achieve targets, things like that, and gives you notification when they're live. Go and hit that subscribe button, guys, on all your content creators that you enjoy. Go and do it, guys. Um, we've got uh, Esco Hossi as well. Welcome back. We've got Mitchell, uh, Bricks Motion, William Wilkinson, uh, Jason Rowley, Windblade, another of our members. Thanks for being a member. And don't forget, in, I think it's about two weeks' time, we're going to be doing the next draw for the uh, $30 gift card if you're a platinum member so if you are a platinum member i think everyone sort of fingered across the bit for grind time because they still haven't won it i think pretty much everyone else has uh but yeah uh we've got uh, action well as well hey how's it going uh renault van holland uh richard trender we've got uh greg knight kill cannon uh ttv tried falls back welcome back hey we've got mirage jake in the chat Thanks for joining us, bud. Uh, we've got Carnage McKnight in the chat as well. Uh, Brian Leonard, uh, Ricky Lau, Volcanicus, Chris Lewis. How's it going? Long time no see. Good to see you back. Uh, Alpha Tryon, uh, Tyler Leonard, uh, Michael Cooper. What's up? And uh, I think we've just caught everyone, unless someone sort of comes in a bit late. But yeah, I think that's it. So, yeah, that is the plan for today. So, we'll jump into the news and then we will uh, we will check out um, some gaming -ish, this stuff. <laughs> so, bye week, Grana, weep, nitty bong. So, yes, over a thousand alliances took part. Now, that doesn't mean a full a 1,000 Lions has got it. Because, listen, some, some Alliances had 10 members in them. Some of them. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I don't get too carried away. But, still, uh, it is, uh, you know, crazy to think that, you know, maybe at least 600 full Alliances probably did get it. So, uh, yeah, really good. Um, but, yeah, super, super good event uh, last week. Enjoyed it. Uh didn't enjoy the crystals that are pulled, but if you're not seeing that crystal pulling video, go and check out Monday's stream. Wow. Wow. We uh we missed Mirage Jake. We definitely did. Uh but this week's event is Lord and a Lord. 
So, uh, yeah, it's a Prime Core Shard event. 5,000 Prime Core Shards. And as I've said, guys, save all your Prime Core Shards. Save them up. The apes have said that they will be using them in some way. They've not said what, but they're going to use them in some way. So, save them up, guys. Who knows what it is? It could be something amazing. It could be pretty something awful. But you don't want to be left behind. This is how I sort of stay ahead of the game. As soon as they mention things like this, I start sort of hoarding certain things until I get a feel for what I need. And then, yeah, hence why I'm, I'm hoarding four-star crystals. Hence why I'm hoarding five-star shards. Hence why I'm hoarding my prime core shards. For that reason, guys. But uh, 100 total shard crystals up for grabs as well, containing 5-star shards, 100 4-star shards, 2 and 3-star shards, uh, or 1,000 shards. Oh, and uh, thank you, Chris Lewis, for being a member. Thank you, bud. And don't forget you're in, uh, in for that uh, gift card again. I think Chris Lewis has won it once before, I think. I think it's just the once for Chris Lewis. I think uh, SG Soundwave won it twice, I think. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for being a member, bud. Appreciate it. Uh, it works out roughly about 300 and odd 5 star shards something like that so um, yeah not too bad not too shabby uh, and then 20k ally and energy on and 300k spark so a lot of spark so you got to think they're pumping a lot of spark into the game recently 300,000 spark why hmm will we see ability 12 in some way or something who knows but lost spark being pumped into the game right now, which makes me think we're going to need spark for something. Let's see. Uh, total slots of prizes. Uh, I can see there new star, yeah, new shard crystals. Sorry, prime core shards and then alloy and spark and energy on so so. You can see there. Uh, and that's the uh, containing of the uh, new shard crystals. So yes, the new uh, combats wind strike and bar you are now in the shop. Uh, we did show them last week. Uh, they haven't changed. So if you want to see what they are like, go and check out last week's Thursday stream. Um, they're all right. They're not bad. I would say they're amazing. Uh, I won't be disappointed pulling them. So they've got their uses. So yeah. Um, and then obviously we know up next is Slingshot and Acid Storm. So, uh, these guys, when they first come out, looking pretty good. And the apes said, we've got to change it a bit. But I'm not a big fan of how they've changed it. Uh, yeah, I can't say too much right now. But I'll give them my feedback in there. I don't really go and play test that much, as you know. But I do sort of jump in there and again and again out just write something and jump out again i know we get into massive discussions but this time i'm just like and it's same in the war chats i'll sort of jump in i'll make a comment and then i'll just jump back out again and i'll sort of lead them guys to it um but yeah i'm not really impressed right now with the way he is uh the way he was he was all right he was good he was you know he had two parts of his ability in the first not first part but the the first bit of it uh, it was quite interesting the way they're going with it uh something a bit refreshing uh, the second part, meh, not really that good. And now, it's even worse. But we'll, we'll see. They've still got time to sort of claw it back, I hope, uh, and get it changed. But, uh, yeah, they are looking cool. Uh, we did show again, they took show in stream uh, last week. Not the abilities, nothing like that, but we just showed them in the showroom. Uh, but that'll be next week. So, again, if you want to see that next week and not miss it, hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that notification bell. And uh, you can check out Slingshot and Acid Storm in my stream next week. Uh, then we've got Community Corner, we've got a few uh, cool drawings, uh, not sure why we've got um thingy in there, what are they called? Angry Birds, I've got the name then, Angry Bird Transformers, but hey. Yep, but yeah, that's done a computer in it. Is it? Still pretty cool though, regardless. Yeah. Uh, so Saga schedule is only a four week event guys keep it in mind so if you are doing the battle pass um, you should be at least like three quarters of the way through two thirds of the way through uh, I'm about two thirds of the way through I think but there's a lot of big points to be had uh, with obviously big targets which I should sort of get this week or next a lot of event ones that I didn't sort of complete in the first one and obviously last week was a short event so it's been quite hard so uh plan on smashing that this weekend hopefully 
bug fixes and improvements. So dispatch missions. So I've heard some uh, rumours that this has not been fixed as such. Uh, because the idea behind dispatch missions that they're going to change it so that when you do uh, send bots out on a dispatch mission, they won't be removed from your squad. They'll be on a cooldown, I think. That was the idea. Uh, but I'm hearing a few uh, rumours and complaints that that's not the case. Uh, let me know in the chat, guys, so I can let everyone else know. Uh, but from what I'm hearing, that's not the case. But I'm sure they'll fix it. It's just a matter of when. Uh, over the past week, players have been unable to switch their combiner ability. It doesn't actually say that they fixed this. It just states what the bug was. So I'm hoping they do sooner than later. Uh, and it does seem like they have fixed Bumblebee, Scrap, No Blur, and run about hoisting crankcase, Afterbreaker, and Flame War. I did try Bumblebee on test server. It worked fine. And I just tried him in a uh, battle on the live server. And it seemed to work good. Um, someone in my alliance, it wasn't though. So I'm not too sure if they've seen something I haven't. Or it's situational or something. But it seems to be fixed. If that's the case, I'm super pumped. And literally someone in our um, slap chat said, Bumblebee is going to be crazy OP now they fixed him. And I, I kind of agree. You know, it's going to be as good as he should have been when he was, you know, brought out as a five star. And... You know, that bar that they set for him. So it's going to be really, really good. A massive part of my war team, without a doubt. Crazy good. Uh, Bayou's animation's been changed. Um, there's an issue um, where Nemesis Prime couldn't be level past level 20. That's a bit weird, but hey, that's been fixed, supposedly. Um, Ultra Magnus, they've gone and applied a fix that allowed Ultra Magnus to target bots under their abilities. Uh, he's still not fixed him. He's, he's still pretty awful. And then a load of fixes for World and Sea Phantom, which, uh, to be honest with you, should have been fixed before they came out. It's a bit of a, you know, uh, I can't swear, but a bit of a um, sugar show. But yeah, uh, hopefully that's uh, all fixed now. You know, we don't want new bots coming out and they've been broken as soon as they come out. You know, it's not good. Uh, and then a few weeks back, they did mention this. So uh, we updated the way we signposted electrical damage in the game. We are currently doing the same with fire and acid. Fire and acid. Ooh, who would use acid, I wonder? Maybe the counterpart would use fire, maybe. Maybe that's a bit of a clue, maybe. Who knows? But yeah, uh, they're doing the same now with fire and acid damage and labelling everyone who does what. Uh... Uh, yeah, if you actually use your brain cells a bit, you might see where they're going with this, which could be interesting. And yes, they hope to have it live next week. And uh, that is everything. Uh, just going to catch up in the chat, see if there's anything in the chat that we want to... Uh, uh, Chip Cox has said, sorry about your pause, was it? It happens, sadly. I'm, I'm not... Uh, I didn't enjoy it, but it does happen occasionally. Um... Ability 12, are you mad? We're still missing 90 ability 11s. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Just, you know, but uh, there must be something to do with Spark. Who knows? Um, Bricks Motion hoping it's an exclusive 5 star. No, it won't be. It will not be an exclusive 5 star. I think they'll use Prime Core Shard to power up your bots somehow. I really do. I really do. Uh, Volcanic is another sword combat will get won't work on drift. Yeah, another one. Yeah, they do know, but I think it's just too hard work to fix it. Um, Grind time. I'm into the total spark crystals on both accounts. Oh, right on the battle pass. Oh, I'm not that far. I'm not that dedicated. <laughs> My Polish put is fixed. That's just as players expected. The bots are highlighted in your squad instead of removed. So you know who needs swapping. Yeah. Yeah, that, well, that's how it's supposed to work. That's right. What do you, I don't know what people wanted. If, if you, they're on a thing. Yeah, what the heck? that's how it worked. I don't know. I'm baffled what people wanted there, really. Then. Um, Ricky Lau's going to level up Blades and Cup for events. Definitely Cup. You're going to use Lagoon. Definitely use Cup on the Goon for zone at least 14. At least. At pretty much any level after 50. Because it's so, so amazing. 
Yes, Roly Poly brothers are in the house, Jason Roly. <laughs> My tag partner's here. <laughs> I might still call you guys Legion of Doom. <laughs> uh, Volcanicus, 46k Prime Core shards back. 46,000 Prime Core shards. No. 46,000. 46,000? No. You can't have 46,000. I don't think he's ever been 46,000 in the game. <laughs> uh, MD Prime's John. This is a bit late, but it's all right. It's all right. Uh, Bricks Motion Sport. How's Dal doing? Level 1. Still level 1. That's where he's going to stay. Until they fix him. Until they improve him in some way. Literally. Uh, Penny Lancaster again. Are you getting used to dialing line as a nope? I haven't used them at all. I think they're equipped on someone. I, I couldn't even tell you who they're equipped to. I, I could not even tell you. Did I put it on five star slash? I think I did just for the extra fire bit that it fires out, the extra damage to help, but that's it, not for any other reason. So, yeah, um. Yeah, Matt Paul has popped from the chat to see that players still wanted to use them. Yeah, I, I agree, but it's not going to happen because the idea is that you send them away on a mission. So think of this as a story timeline. Think of the whole game as a story timeline. Obviously, every time we open box and we have events and stuff as a story. So think of that story timeline. The idea is these missions in that story timeline is they're going out doing little missions. You know, in between events and stuff like that, in between doing whatever they're doing. That's the idea. So how could they go out on missions and still be able to attack in your squad? Which I kind of get, but yeah. Where are the mods in? Let's, uh... Let's, uh... Mute these, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Have we got any mods in the chat? I think Grant is Grant time mod. I don't know. I can't remember. Just my log. I don't think any mods are in the chat tonight. Are they? But yeah, we need them moving. So we're going to do that, aren't we? We'll have to do that. Ah, Grant time sorted it. Good man. Good man. Cool. Okay, let's go into. Uh, into the game. Okay, so uh, apologies, Cyclonus from Darkness Awakens. Nothing on your base, bud. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and slash it. I know I've touched upon this, and I've tried it in a couple of wars with mixed success. Some of them were super easy. I was like, wow. And then I actually, in the last war, because I've been so successful, tried it in the last war and failed miserably and dropped 10 points because of it. So I was pretty devastated, really. So I think you need more practice. But the idea is to get up to that HQ with as least amount of points possible, as fast as possible. Take it out shield gen as well, um, but without losing slash. That's the idea. But yeah, that is the idea. So, what the plan is, is to drop Rook right at the beginning there. And then pop the outpost, I think. Then I want to rush up round this way. I want the bots to rush upwards. So, they'll rush round. Uh, put a bit of music on over there. Uh, that's the idea. Then we're going to pop the combiner. Uh, we're going to hit this with the Titan. Uh, I'll use the Titan just to take out the shield gen. That is always getting used for. Uh, we've got to take out these healing build bots. Uh, they should go as well. Um, maybe a boost as well, take them out. Uh, then as soon as we get in range of the HQ, smash it with Slash. That's the idea. So we're going to take Otters Prime, a lot of tanky bots, and maybe one or two gunners, maybe with sea base spray to get closer in. Uh, something cheap with a good clearing. Uh, and tracks as well to keep uh, alive and a couple of healers, maybe even three healers, might even try that. Uh, I've just got to keep Slash alive. Sometimes I've rushed and Slash has died. Sometimes I've rushed and Slash has gone off on one and gone the other way. Uh, this ain't too bad because if she goes the other way, she's going straight to the HQ. 
So, uh, I have been practicing a bit. So, uh, let's give it a go. I'm just mile up on what has been used, so. Right, okay. So, the reason we're putting Rook down first, for the simple reason is that that's to get any T-Lock mines. I've tried it in the past, and Optus Prime's hit the T-Lock mine, then he can't rush, uh, then he gets hit, and it's only a 4-star Prime. So, Rook is used to uh, pop any T-Lock mines. Oh, at least another tank, so I might take another tank, actually. I might put Laser Optimus down first. Then, we're going to take uh, Rook. And then Rook's gonna pop the outpost. Then we're gonna rush, so we're gonna pop Optus Prime down after that. Optus Prime. Then we're gonna take Sea Spray. And then some other bots that are. I'm gonna take some bots now that are good at rushing. Uh, they don't have a uh, distanced. Um, what's the word? Alternate attack? Not alternate attack, you know what I mean. Passive attack. Uh, so, Rhinox, don't take Sentius. Slash ain't a good bot to use, to be honest with you, because of passive attack. Um, I'll take Rhinox, take a couple of healers, so we'll take Wheeljack and we'll take, uh, we'll take First Aid because uh, Ratchet's in that lab, and then we'll take Slash there. We'll take a Combiner, so uh, we'll take uh, Defensor there as well. There we go. Taking defense as well because I want to suck them outpost bots to the other side of the map. So Slash has got time to get in there. Okay. Let's try this out. And by Grind Time's reaction, I think Volcanicus is not mistaken. He has got that many Brian Cushards. <laughs> he must be saying for a long time. I've used mine for G Metal Cores. Fair play to you. You're well ahead of the curve then. Okay, cool. We cannot pop that. That's ideal. So I want to put him right at the beginning of the outpost. Uh, right at the beginning of the landing pad. So that he pops any t lap mines. That's the idea. And there you go. There's t lap mine, you see? We've got that cannon up there. If we can. You see there, it's not worked at all. And Slash has not even gone up. This is what I hate about Prime Rush, man. How is Prime Rush not still not working? Let's drop the shield. Where is Slash? I'll just send her up there. What's she over there? Yeah, this is going to fail miserably. I've had to do three rushes just and Slash didn't even go the way she's supposed to do. <laughs> yes! 
I'm loving that. I'm loving that. <laughs> wow, he's a real fuming with that. Sorry, Cyclonus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Titan for the win. Yeah, that didn't go plan at all. Did not go to plan one bit. Just realised, well, I didn't take tracks either. But it didn't even work anyway, so. Awful. Cool. Right, now we're going to go on test server and try again. On some other bases. Hey, four star megs level 30. You, th you say what? I thought I'd never see that. I thought I'd never see me leveling cons. Honestly, thought I'd never see it. Yes, Bricks Motion, Titans are overpowered still, even now. But, you know, it was badly designed at the back, to be fair. If he's got low HP buildings like that, it's just kind of easy. You want to put your energy on an alloy store, which is near to the uh, Titan to sort of stop that, really. But, um, yeah, I'm going to take advantage of that, so, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go on test server and we'll uh, we'll try on there as well. Do some more slashing. So it's very base dependent, but basically, I'll be honest with you, I totally messed that up really, how I've been doing it. So how I've been doing it is, I've been dropping one bot, uh, use the sludge and breaking a wall, or I've been dropping a bot first and then popping the T-lock mines, anything like that. Um, then I've been using the Titans to take out the shield gen, along with my combiner, depending on what combiner I'm using. Volcanic is probably the best one for that, or make Supreme. You need someone with a good reach. Um, and then rushing and slashing, basically. Uh, so not much like that one, but it was a bit of a better design, that one, to be fair. But, uh, let's give it a go. Let's see if we can get... We might even get some uh, activated shield gens on this, you never know, but we can, uh, we can only try, can't we? We can only try. So we'll take Volcanicus, so it's not, you know, so it's uh, fair. In Prime Zone as well. So again, nothing against anyone else's base, you know, but we'll see what it comes against. And like I said, stay tuned, guys, because we are going to be rating every single five star batch not just the bots but the batches and saying you know which one is the best batch and comparing it to 2020 comparing them to them batches so yeah stay tuned okay cool all right i haven't brought a sludge ever i could do a sludge here. very similar uh set up this Deploy. And then let's put a uh, sea spray down there. I just realised that our Titan's not fighting anyone, so uh, it's going to be a lot easier. So let's put the Titan down there like that. Put Volcanicus down. You can see there, Volcanicus in reach. So we're going to use Volcanicus on the Shield Gen. Pop the combiner as well, sadly, I think. If the combiner's active, that is. Nope, no combiner. It's going to be super easy, isn't it? I might not even need slash, though, at point.
Half like a pro. Hey, and there's a wind strike. And pretty much did nothing. Oh, that ain't good. Oh, stun lock. Let's get rid of Felback. We don't like stun lock. There we go. We're out of stun lock. Get rid of that healing build bot for a start. That needs to go. And an easy slash. Yeah, it's Tessa. I don't forget. Any Lancaster, sadly. And there you go. Easy with one or two abilities with Slash. If you can get in range with a five star. Maxed out. Two abilities will definitely take it down. Sometimes one, depending on how much of the base you've cleared. So if it's time trap, clear the bottom, drop Slash. Usually one ability to get in range, one ability to take out the uh, HQ. So pretty easy. If it's a front loaded base, then you just need to rush. Make sure you take out the shield gen. So that was simply just sort of clearing the front and then just pathing slash upwards. Nice and easy. That was a pretty poor design though, really. Uh, yeah. It's the same guy again. It's the same guy again. Don't tell me we're attacking the same guy again. That's quite funny if we are. No, we're not. <laughs> well, okay, cool. This is a good base for it, though, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah. Let's have a go. Just going to put Rook down there. We'll drop Rook there. We're going to try and pull this outpost to the right. Don't forget that they uh, prioritize outposts. So, go like this. So if we... Uh, I want to rush up to that, really. Let's rush up to there, anyway. Let's rush up to there. Where does Slash go? That'll do, that'll do. A long strength around the wall. Oh, now, now she's going around the wall, but never mind. There goes Slash. Okay. Slash is in range now. That's all good. That's all good. So I've got Slash into range. Volcanic is up there. Need to get rid of that build bot very quickly. That's the main stumbling block. Shield gen's down. That's all good. Get slashed through there. This is base down now. No matter what happens now, unless it's a flare mine, but this is base down. We've got to the HQ with slash, and once that happens, once you've got 30 ability points and you've got slash there, it's game over, guys. There you go. See, some people saying same alliance, different guy. Grand time saying different base, same name. Who knows? It's a lot of squiggles. <laughs> MD Prime, I'm not going to lie. I have not got a clue what you just written. <laughs> a big change they could make is that Combi Pops Outpost Box. And I think Combi... PS should. Combine a PS should. Out. Oh, yeah. You mean combine a pops outpost? I wouldn't want that. To be honest with you. It makes it a lot easier. Then you can just drop your, out, drop your combiner and pop all the outposts for no ability points. So, yeah. I get where you're going with it, but let's be honest. It's already crazy uh, with, um, with suck as it is. It's crazy, isn't it? Pen Lancaster, I want to see a live war. I do live war attacks all the time, especially on a Monday. What do you mean, wants to do all five bases? I've done that quite a few times with her, but sadly, I don't get coins from the apes, so. 
Okay. So as well, when you're trying to path slash, always try and clear a sort of section. So to get to get up there, you need to clear all this. And there's a combiner there. So this is a hard slash base. Really hard. So uh, what have we got? Let's have a look. It's a poor base. It looks like there's an old an old HQ-17 base. This. We used quite a lot of ability points there, which is not good, but... Do you remember those days when uh, Goldfire used to be able to take out the MBS? <laughs> Do you remember those days? Oh, those are the days. I'm glad my Titan's distracted anyway, it's a bit more fair now. I'm going to try pass slash round to this uh, mortar here. Once the outpost bots have gone and once that. Oh, Bumblebee! Stop it! Oh, she's going! She's going! She's gone! Um, as I said, once that shield gens down and slash gets to the top. It's game over, guys. It is literally game over now. Visual hit a flare mine. Don't take any chances. We've got a fillet point, so. Don't get locked. Brilliant. Boom! To fair, half these bases, I think we could beat without slashing to fair. No, Volcanicus, no, no. Combiners don't pop outposts. Oh, no. They don't. I want to get a good, I want to get a front loaded base and slash it. Surprised not seeing any front loaded bases. Front loaded bases have been meta for quite a while now. See that catching a lot of older players. Autobots, roll out. Have one more go and then we'll get into um, rating all the five star patches. We'll get into that in a minute. One more go. Come on, give us a good base. Oh, Papi Blaz. Yes. We've hit the jackpot. Top, top guy. Top, top alliance in Scorched Earth. Here we go. Let's see what his base is like. Is it front loaded? I bet it's not. No, it's not front loaded. But let's give it a go. So, here's what we want to do I'm going to sacrifice Sea Spray. I know it's a bit weird saying that, sacrificing Sea Spray, but have you got an anti. Uh, oh, we've got anti. Whoa, that's not good. Okay, that's good. Sea spray can uh, die now for all I care. It's gonna pop an outpost, but it's not the end of the world. I'd rather die now, to be honest with you. That'll do me if he did. So I don't think... No. The tower's not been dropped yet. Oh, yeah, by far, but yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. 
that shield gen down? Yes, shield gen is down. Try and get rid of these uh, outpost bots now. So this is a you know a top guy in the game. He's live right now. This is his base in testing. Where we're testing the new current effects, which are a lot harder to fair as well. Got any healing billbots anywhere? We'll do some damage around there to help her get through a bit quicker. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh Artist Prime, we'll do Rock, we'll do Bumblebee, do Slash. Take out that Lion Eyes, whatever it is there first. Slash might go through the wall, maybe, I think, actually. Slash. Don't tell me Slash got hacked. That's not good if she did. Oh no! It was such a good plan. It was such a good plan. And it nearly came off. Oh, I'm devastated. I should have popped the combiner. Oh, that's what I mean. You get so close. You can see where it's going there though, guys. If I could just rush up to there. I tried rushing up and she got hacked and came back down again. But if I can get up to that, I should take that build bot out earlier. With Volcanicos or something, or with uh, another bot, maybe, uh, but yeah. And uh, maybe focus on the uh, trips kind of a bit more. But yeah, only, uh, I mean, 26 ability points left. I think I could have done it. I really do. Can we hit the Titan? No, we have tried. <laughs> Blaster on his own. Nah. <laughs> Can't tap. Have a blast one. Was a nil. Yeah. Same. Uh, Grand Sans which defense has the same radius as Prime Rush? Beam lasers. So if you if you it's a beam laser in range, normally at the back of the HQ, likely though. But yeah, basically, guys, if you want to test your base to see if it's Prime Rushable, then just take a um, beam laser, and that is Prime's range. So top tip there, guys. So then, quick, to give you an idea. Uh, that's probably changed because of um, I don't know if it's changed because of Titan effects, but that's generally prime rush distance. So there you go, from there to to the uh, beam laser. There you go. Okay, let's get on to reviewing these bots. Okay. Oh, one second, guys. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Down. Cool. I'm going to try something else as well. Let me know if the music's working. We might have tried music on our stream. Let me know. Cool. Hopefully that's working anyway. So, the idea is, guys, that we're going to rate all these bots uh, 1, 2, 5. And at the top here, we're going to support a total rating. So, I haven't sort of predetermined these. I'm literally going to go through every single bot very quickly. Uh, go through whether I like them or not, why I like them, why I don't like them, and why I've rated them where they are. And then we're going to get a total for each uh, batch. So, uh, at the end of that... Oh, sorry, yeah, I've gone dark. So you can't see me. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Hey, I'm very big. There we go. Where's the... 
Oh, I'll... Let's try again. There we go. And now I'm the wrong way around as well. <laughs> See, we have these good intentions and then we can uh, think it. Let's have a... There we go. There we go. Cool. So, yeah, we've got all the bots. We're going to rate them, like I said, and then we're going to put a thing at the top, a total. And then we're uh, going to uh, see what we scored them last year as well. Just uh, let me know if you can hear the music. Granted, the music sounds good. Is it too loud? Is it too quiet? Let me know. But, yeah, cool. So, the music, just get an idea, is uh, from uh, someone called Harris Heller. I watch his streams. He does a lot of uh, how-to-do streams, streams, basically. Like, he gives you tips and all that. And it's basically royalty fee music. So if you ever decided to stream, guys, go and check out uh, Harris Heller Stream Beats. And I sort of picked some songs that I sort of thought sounded Transformers ish. He's done loads of guys, honestly, like different albums for different sounds. And he's a cool guy. So, uh, yeah, uh, go and uh, check him out. Harris Heller Stream Beats. Especially if you wanted some uh, royalty free music, guys. Just give him a little bit of a plug there. Cool. Okay, so literally you can see here we've rated them all. We've got them all into batches. Uh, we're going to rate them each by one. So straight off the bat, obviously we've got to start with my man Sunstreaker and Swindle. Um, this guy, I probably rated low in 2020 because he's been in a lot of heat. But you know what? After testing for ability 11, it wasn't as bad as I thought. He's still got that long 10 second burn. So I wouldn't say he's awful. Um, so I'd probably put him as three. I'd probably put him as three out of five. Uh, probably not as low as I would have put him. Silver Thundercracker is a lot of anti healing cores, and there's uh, the anti electric cores sort of affect him. Uh, but he's still decent. Um, ooh, I'd probably put him as three again as well. He has amazing range, uh, and I still wouldn't be too disappointed in pulling him. Uh, but I'd still put him as three. I still think they're okay. They're not bad pulls. Um, no, he's definitely a good pull. Would I put him as five though? Yeah, I probably would. Nor's one probably one of the pick of the batches in that batch. So uh, yeah, I would definitely like a five star. No, absolutely beasty with a uh, lionizer and uh, you know with his G1 core. So I definitely put Nor's a five. Grimlock, ooh, I'd put him down here as a two. I'd, ooh, I'd say one, but Grimlock, Razor Claw, I'd put as two. Um, not ability 11 is probably put up to two from a one, but uh, really, really poor five stars. Not one that I want. Um, hot rod, oh, nine months ago would have been a five, but the FFD has sort of nullified him a bit, but he's still good. Uh, so hot rod, Nemesis Prime, I'd probably put as a four. Let's try again. So, yeah, so rating that, we've got five plus four, that's nine plus. Six that's 15, 18. So, batch number one, 18 out of 25. Batch two, Otter's Prime. It's got to be a five. I mean, his primers don't work all the time, but he's got incredible, he's got crazy health, he's got crazy DPS, and it does work most of the time keeping your bots together. So, I, I would definitely put Prime up here. I really would put him up, up in the uh, sort of godly five section. Skyburst, again, ability 11, G1 cores made her better. Um, ooh, 2R3, 2R3, I think I'll be ooh, a little bit generous, put them into 3. Yeah, I think I'll be generous and put them into 3. Uh, I can't put any higher than that. But uh, if I put 17, <laughs> I put it 17. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 34, 15, 16, 17. Oh, you're right, yeah. My bad. Can't even add up. Cool, thanks. <laughs> All right, Wheeljack and Shockwave. Definitely uh, four, I'd say. I don't think they're fives because of Minerva. Or maybe put them as five until Minerva came in the game. And I think Minerva's the actual level that we sort of need to get at. Uh, Drift the Barricade, I would put as a one. Really, really awful bots. Uh, I do not rate them at all. Really, really poor. Uh, Windblade could be used for Sack. Uh, decent for Zen Farm, I suppose. Not really in Wars, but I think she took a bit of a tumble. Um, and I think at two, I think. So, total here is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
Just confirm it for me, guys. <laughs> I obviously can't add up. <laughs> A lot of export. It's a UK thing. This can't add up. <laughs> okay. Ultra Magnus and Galvatron. Well, we know where they're going straight away. We know they're going down here. We know for a fact. Pretty awful bot. I mean, I'd put Galvatron up the job there, you know. So, that's where I put Galvatron. Uh, maybe even there. That's how different they are, honestly, guys. Um, but, for the sake of bots... Ooh, ah, ooh, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's do that. So, yeah. Let's do that. Obviously, the score will be higher if you're a con. If you're not a bot, though, definitely down there. And this, this episode's got about, you know, disparity between the two things. Well, that's a good example there. Um, Firefly and Blastoff, I'd probably put them as a four, you know. I mean, they're no jet fire, but the ability to is amazing. Uh, so I'd definitely put them up there. Um, Springer and Astro Train, um, I'd probably put as a three. I'm going to put Galvatron down here to make some room because... Springers are alright. They're alright. They're not bad. They're good for pathing. But that second ability is not really good enough. The healing's not that much. They're good bots, but I wouldn't say they're amazing. Um, I'd probably put Cheeto down here too, in three. Um, he's lost a lot in the current meta. He just doesn't heal enough. He takes a lot of damage with the MDS. So he's not sort of stuck with time. Definitely sort of fell away. Um, so yeah, I'd put him in three. And then Jar's very costly bot. I'd probably put them down as two. Um, yeah, again, it's the cost. Great range, great great damage, not quite enough for Prime League, but that cost nine ability points. You could do so much better for nine ability points nowadays. So, um, yeah. So, total there, we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen for batch three. Batch four is an interesting one. So, going back to 2020. You know, this would have been like high. So it leads to Lugnut. I'd probably put us four, not as high as maybe they once were. Good sack bots, but they, you know, they can't really one shot anymore like they used to and do a load of damage. They do good damage. The base 11's decent, but, you know, they can't take out any structures. So they struggle to get points back. That's what I've found personally. Uh, good for Zen farming, obviously. Um, Sourwave and Blastart, straight up as fives, without a doubt. Absolutely amazing. Uh, beastly. Probably one of the best spots in the game for me, without a doubt. Uh, Sludge and Straxus. I'd, mm, I'd probably put as a three. Slush attacks work very well to get around the MDS and get around the combiner outposts that are in the middle. They've got a bit of a comeback, but they are situational. Uh, Prowl and Brawl I'll put as two. Not good at all. Um, fell away from the meta because they don't have the range of jets and because of combats. Um, but yeah, not that good. I like his ability 11, don't get me wrong, and he's decent, but you know, he's no jet fire. He's no jet fire. Uh, and then, yeah, Ratchet and Hook definitely up there as a four. So we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 for batch 4. Batch 5, Snarl and Hunger. I, I imagine these are quite high in 2020. Because that was before combats. Combats have changed a lot. Um, but Snarl and Hunger, because they can't equip any good combats. We've talked about we need some good combats in playtest um, for you know tanks and for bots that can't equip good combats. Um, so yeah, I would literally put these guys as a 2. Uh, they got to overlap a bit because they're huge. Um, so, yeah. Rodimus Prime, Multimaster. Hmm. I'd probably put them as three. They could be good for clearing areas. I know people use them for that. I know people use Cheeto for that, but these guys have got a bit more health, but not not to the heights of uh, Russian Smash. No, definitely not. So, I'll put them as a three. Warpath and Skull Smasher. I'd put them as five. Two bot, well, oh, a bot that I would definitely want. The fact they can hit the uh, Titan, take out build bots, take out shield gens from the other side of the map, makes them obviously uh, godly right now in the current meta. Absolutely crazy. Obviously, the healing doesn't help them, but taking out them build bots uh, with something that's not airborne is uh, vital, uh, especially in the current meta with the anti air. So, um, yeah, definitely. 
Perceptor. Uh, I'd put as a three. I don't think anything else has helped him. He's, you know, I still don't rate him. The, his hack at all. He's, he's definitely no blades for me. Um, but yeah, he's all right. And RC, I think he's made a bit of a comeback. I think RC probably a four up there with the likes of Rook. Uh, I'd like RC. You know, I uh, you know, she's not Rook, thank you but uh, I would like her a lot. And thank you, uh, Zendali Garnet, for subscribing. Thank you. But yeah, I definitely like. Um, RC and Nightbird. So, yeah. So, this batch, what we've got? We've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 for batch 5. Interesting. Interesting. Batch 6. This would have been high rated for me back then. I think this was with a new batch out, I think. This might be the most current batch in 2020. Um, so, first aid, I'd put as a 3. He's not as good as other healers. He was probably a 5 when I did this last time, but. You know, FFDs really hurt him. Any bots that come under the FFDs probably drop down one. So, definitely put them as a three. Hotspot. Hmm. I think a three as well. Maybe even a two. Yeah, maybe even put them as a two. Not used at all. I mean, yeah, great tank and a lot of health, but doesn't reflect enough in, in the current meta. Uh, to do enough damage and dies very quickly. I, I'm not a big fan of any rush in bots. Um, but yeah, not a fan of these two guys. Uh, Goldfire. I'd probably put it down as a three. Not enough health for the current meta. This guy was godly in 2020. But I'd probably put him as a three now. To be honest with you. Um, Sandstorm and Octane. Uh, far too costly. Great bots, but... Far too costly. I put them down as a two as well. I put them right down there. Maybe a three at push. I could maybe push to a three. We'll have to double all these up. <laughs> because I think that um, these guys are going there as well. So I may put them aside like that, actually. Put them like that. But you get the idea. Um, but yeah. There, three as well. So this batch, three, six, nine, twelve. 14 for batch 6. Okay, next batch. Well, I think it's safe to say that we've kept these down here for batch for out of 3, but none of these guys will. So, Blades, I'd put as 4 without a doubt for batch 7. Let's just uh, move these over a bit. Whoops. Well, we're just stretching them. So let's just uh, put them all in there a minute. We know all of them are three. All that batch. We put all that batch of the three, really, to be honest with you. But I'm not a big fan of Hotspot at all. Um. So, yes. Dirge and Blades. Definitely as a four, without a doubt. Rhinox, Trenchless. I'd put those fives, honestly. For the leveling they could do, for the health they've got. With that new uh, Transmetal Core, makes them crazy, crazy, crazy good. Honestly, unbelievable. Jetfire, Starscream. You can't beat a one-shot, even for build bots. I'm going to put them as fours in my war team. Absolutely essential. Anti-air is going to not do them that much justice. They may drop eventually with anti-air. But I do like a nice one-shot jet that can take out an MDS without a uh, regen core. Uh, Smoke screen. I put a three, you know. I mean, maybe a four at a push, but... I don't know. I'm not a big fan in the current meta. They're just not enough health. They just die very quickly. And because they need sort of glitch on them, they sort of fall back a bit behind the team. You want sort of flak in your team and top shot ID. I was talking to someone today and said, you need pretty much flak and top shot in your team solid. Once you start putting glitch in there as well and your bots start to separate, it causes pathing issues where that bot will walk off. I don't know that Smoke Screen and Breakneck have got ultimate range pretty much, so they can sit back like that. But that's when they start popping out poles and they die because they get hit by moss or whatever else. Um, so in the current meta, they're good. Like I said, a three is not bad. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure they're up there as fours yet. I'm, I'm on the cusp. Uh, Laser Moxus, Amanda Megs, definitely a four. I won't go as far as five. Uh, or maybe, I don't know, four and a half. They're three and a half. They're four and a half, probably. Uh, I won't go as five. You can clear a good area with Laser Optimus. 
Um, but we'll probably put them as um, as fours, I think. So for this batch, we've got 4, 8, 12, uh, 17, 20 for batch 7. Not 23, 20. Batch 8, interesting one. So Swoop and Scourge. Not a big fan on attack, but good on defense. But uh, I'd personally put them as a three. Not a big fan. I haven't pulled them yet. I don't really want them. I can pick them up. Uh, yeah, not a fan myself. Uh, Rook and Block. Ooh, I'd put them as a five, personally. Amazing popping out bolts. Amazing health. Amazing damage, even, with their abilities. Absolutely crazy good. Obviously better than uh, RC, but crazy good. Bumblebee. Honestly, up there. You might think I'm crazy. Bumby and Scrapnel, five. Absolutely ridiculous. And now this sort of fixed ability, that's going to be absolutely crazy. Take out that um, electric billboard. And honestly, they can stun pretty much anything off in the MDS. Nothing is safe. And it protects your bot so much. And with two healers, you use Bumblebee. does damage. It stuns for two ability points. Gets your healers healing again. Absolutely incredible. Honestly, Someone in the chat today said this guy is going to be like overpowered and need a nerf. And I think people will be crying nerf to him. I really do. Is that, is that crazy good? Now they fix that issue with him. Octopus Sea Spray, I'd put as a four. They're still relevant. But, you know, with the new uh, electric cores, they're not as uh, powerful. Still really good. But with the uh, healing in Prime League, self healing, things like that, they're not quite what they were. Still really, really good. You know, not amazing. Um, Impactor, I would put as a four as well. Absolutely amazing. You know, um, clears a really, really good area. And uh, Grant has made a good point that, of course, this depends on play style. Yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, a lot of people will have different opinions, but like I said, this is sort of my opinion on, you know, what I think. You know, if you don't agree with it, you're welcome to disagree and put that in the chat. Nothing wrong with that. You know, you might put one of these bots really high up. You might use Drift. It's a really good standard, but me personally, not so much. So what we've got here, we've got 5, 10, 14, 18, 21. 21 for batch 8. Batch 9, slash. Oh, I'd still only put slash as a 4. Really good for leveling. Could be amazing for slashing bases, but base dependent and does have her issues. Maybe it's a three, but she does do really good for leveling. I used my four star and maxed it out, leveling other bots. That was incredible. Brainstorm and Guy Hawk. I had high hopes for these guys, but they just, everyone I speak to just said, yeah, they just don't really work that well. And, you know, that slowdown, 90% was crazy. And I, I really liked, I really enjoyed testing it and using it just in front of your bots. But it just didn't work out. I don't know why. I'm baffled. This is one of those bots where you look at it on paper and test it. I think, yeah, it's really good. Then you try it in Prime League and it just doesn't give you enough. So, sadly not. Uh, Red Alert and Run Amok. I'd maybe put them as fours. A lot of people use them. Me, not personally, but I can see how that could be crazy good. Special ability 11. But those FFDs really hurt him. It could be maybe a five before the FFDs. The way he is, you know, with 100% immunity and 50% to all the alloys, alloys, allies. But, you know, with the FFDs, it fell down a bit. Um, pipes and Headstrong, without a doubt, are two. And the only reason they're going two is because they've got the highest health in the game. Similar to Hotspot, very good health of a tank, but pretty awful. Let's be honest, not great. Uh, and then we've got Skylakes and Blitz, unpopular opinion. But three, really good damage. Absolutely crazy, really good. But pathing is awful. Really, really bad. To the point where I just don't want Skylakes at all. I've got a Skylakes at like 63.10 that I do not use a four star. I'm not even planning on pulling the five star. In that batch now, I have literally got um, Pipes, Skylinks, and Brainstorm left to pull. And I'm not bothered with that batch. The, hence why I've got 15,000 shards, guys. I could pull all them bots right now. And I'm really not going to bother. So overall here, we've got 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 for batch 9. So, looking at the ratings there. 
batch three, which I thought it would be to fair, is the worst batch. Not very good meta bots, and obviously Ultra Magnus and Galvatron bring this one down. You really don't want to pull them, guys. You don't want to pull them bots. Really, really poor. Next up, batch six. A lot of bots that have sort of fell away from the meta, really. Um, but, you know, I just can't see him making a comeback. Sandstorm's good for healing. If they increase the points, he might go up. I can't see Goldfire coming back real the way he is, popping out poles with the T-Lock Mines. They were designed for him. Better bots have come out of it now, like Afterbreaker and Blur. They do the job better for the same amount of points. Um, but yeah, quite a poor batch. Um, then we've got uh, batch 215. I, I thought it'd be a bit higher, but Drift brings that down. But Otis Prime, Wheeljack, definitely pick of the bunch. Um, and this is why I'm not going for this batch because I've got Skyburst, I've got Wheeljack, and I've got these three left. So two bad pulls, really, and one good one. So that's why. Uh, next up is nine. Again, nine's an alright batch, but there's no one in it that's like that wows you. There's no one in nine where you're like, I will pull this whole batch for that one bot. You start to look at it and think, I might pull from it, but you're thinking, yeah, but they're all right. No one amazing. That's sort of the feeling when that batch came out. I thought Brainstorm would be the pick of the batch, personally, but I'm just going up what everyone else is because I don't really use him. I haven't got the four-star guys, but I, I love to be testing. But, um, everyone I spoke to doesn't use him in wars. doesn't use him at all, so he can't be that good. And uh, everyone sort of complains about how costly he is. And so, yeah. Uh, after that, we've got batch five and one, which I'm not surprised at, to be fair. And even with Snarl and Grimlock in that batch, the other bots are so godly, like Gnaw and uh, like Warpath and Skull Smasher. That, that's that good. That, uh, you know, it's hard to sort of uh, look at that batch and not think, well, I wouldn't mind one of them bots. And that's why I'm considering those two batches. I'm considering going for Warpath. I've already got Snarl. Which one of the worst bots in the batch? So, if I've got RC or Warpath, won't be the end of the world. I don't really need RC that much because I've got Rook. But won't be the end of the world. Um, obviously, I want Noah. Noah would be amazing. Uh, Rod and Hot Rod would be good as well. Uh, get rid of the FFDs and you can pretty much just walk with Hot Rod and keep bots alive where need be. But I find Hot Rod's a bit more of a. You're sort of saving bots, but the FFD, if you're not to get out part of the plan, then you're going to struggle a bit. Uh, and then batch four is still up there with 18 points. I'm not surprised. There's not really a bad bot in it as such, but a lot of good bots. Uh, Prowl and Brawl are not bad by any means. They're not awful. But I was pretty disappointed when I pulled them, and I've never used them in wars. I've used them here and there. I've tried them out. When the new meta came in, I thought, I need a bot that can take out an MDS or, some, or something. Some good, some high HP defenses from the launch pad. Just don't have the range, don't have the damage, um, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, but yeah, I still use, I, said, I still use Sludge, I still use uh, Ratchet and definitely Blaster. Not really using Elita, but I know a lot of people do for Sack. So there's four good Warbots in there, at least three definite good Warbots that you'll use in a lot of wars. Um, and then obviously, I had a guess it between seven and eight. I, I, honestly, I, I wouldn't be able to, like, to call it. it. I know we obviously can see there it's uh, 2021, but we could, we could probably put small screen higher to four, maybe. Uh, but then again, you could probably put sweep higher to four, maybe as well. You could maybe drop rook down one. You could maybe drop jetfire down one because you look at one, one shot build bots now and mortars, but that's about it. Really, can't shoot one shot the MDS anymore. So you could give or take that, but I'd put seven and eight definitely up there as the two best bundles but you know when you see sort of facebook and people saying what should i go for it's always four seven and eight pretty much and uh i don't think you can go wrong with them but yeah seven and eight definitely the best out there one and five uh, and then four sorry four is definitely still a good batch and one and five they're definitely contenders and then after that you're chancing it you're sort of chancing some bad pulls at some point so Let's have a look. Uh, I can't I honestly can't remember what we uh, what scores I gave these, but let's have a look at what scores these all got in 2020. So in 2020, batch one got 17 uh, out of 25. So interesting, it's exactly the same. I imagine Silver Bolt was higher and Hot Rod was lower. I imagine. Because uh, Hotbar didn't have his ability 11 then, that he, he could do it to two bots. It was quite expensive for what you got. 
Uh, but still, Bolt did have the new build block core, so he'd have been higher. And maybe I put Nara's 4, because I don't think he had ability 11 then. But yeah, same overall. Patch 2 has dropped a lot from 20 to 15. And I think Windblade probably caused that, along with uh drift because just got even worse i mean he could get through walls earlier which made him okay but now he's just awful no one uses him and windblade is not the sack bot she was so yeah uh batch three ultra magnus has gone even lower i think the big one here was cheeto cheeto was probably a five back then he's dropped two places um but yeah i think firefly's gone higher but it's, it's very similar 12 13 but um, yeah, I think Cheetor going down, Springer's probably gone up, and Firefly gone up, and that's probably why it's gone up slightly. Batch 4 was 21 out of 25, now it's 18. I think Elite would have been godly, I think um, Sludge would have been higher as well. Don't forget, it's one of the newest batches out, uh, and was absolutely, you know, incredible at the time. Batch 4 was like, you know, the batch that everyone went to. Uh, really, really good. Even Prowl would have been maybe 3 back then, you know, because he could one-shot. 15 out of 25, so batch 5's definitely come back into the meta more, and I, I put that down to Warpath. Warpath's absolutely immense in the current meta, uh, and he would have probably been a 3 back then. Absolutely crazy, crazy good. RC is, I mean, she'd have been a 2, because she was light rook, but not as good. But, you know, if you haven't got rook, she's amazing still, you know, and I'm in 2 in your team. Popping them out, pulse is becoming even more vital. And then batch 6 was 21 out of 25, and is now 14. Massive drop for batch six. Hotspot has definitely fell down. Sandstorms fell down. I think that every single one of these bots has probably fell down. I think first day would have been four. I think Rustus would have been four. Sandstorm maybe three or four. Goldfire five. Hotspot three or four. I think every single bot has fell down. And obviously Goldfire going from the most powerful bot in the game back then to a three. And it's definitely hurt this batch. And not the batch that it used to be that you want to uh, pull from. So, yeah. That's all the ratings, guys. So, what do you guys think? Any you, any you don't agree with, put it in the chat, guys, and let me know. But, uh, yeah. Absolutely crazy. I can't believe how much batch 6 has dropped. Yeah. Grants has put as well that combat cores and SA11s have changed a lot as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I probably agree with that, that they have changed a lot. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what happens with these in another year's time. No, but this, this is two years ago, don't forget. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes in two years' time. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just thinking to myself which bots I think. Will, I think Swoop might fall away a bit more, I think. For the simple reason of his health. Same as sort of Breakneck and Small Screen have. Health is the issue. With HQ18, they don't increase in health too much. It's going to become even more an issue. I think Red Alert might become more into the meta because it's a high health gunner. We might see a lot more high health gunners at the uh, top levels with less DPS. So will we need more of a... We don't know what's coming. Let's be honest. We don't know what HQ18 is going to bring. But uh, it would definitely be interesting for sure. But yeah. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Let me know. Let's see what else some other people have said already in the comments. Have a look. Law of Avix put new combiner, was it? What are you about? <laughs> um, so, oh, some more further up. Let's have a look. Razor Claw, one of the most disappointing bots I've pulled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Prime also benefits from being eternal. Yeah, yeah, his core does make him valuable. It does. Definitely, uh, yeah. Definitely need a um, G1 core. <laughs> I'll say it was 18 in Australia for batch one. <laughs> Bricks Motions, uh, not happy about putting Drift as one. He's one of the worst bots in the game, but him, Altus Primal, and Ultra Magnus, really, really poor. And Lord Avix says Galvatron's on his war team. Yeah, I mean, this batch, I'd probably put Galvatron higher as three, maybe, uh, to make it 15. 
but Ultra Magnus is a lot, lot worse. Trust me, a lot, lot worse. Yeah, Light Dragons put Galvatron as a high three, low four. I think it means Galvatron. Yeah, what well, you know better than me, but I definitely put Galvatron higher. But Ultra Magnus, no, just doesn't do enough damage. Perceptor is a four. Bricks Motion says. I don't know about that. I'm not a fan of Perceptor at all. I never have been. I think I think I'm still hurt from when I did Perceptor leaderboard many many years ago, and I did that leaderboard. But that was back then where we didn't have testers, so we didn't even know what the bot was like. We had a description. So when I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna hack everything, and then when I got the bot, I was like, this is awful. I've just done a leaderboard weekend for this, and I quit. Sigh over it. Honestly, so yeah. Quick smoke and want smokey up. Yeah, I probably could. Yeah, I could probably put smokey up to be fair. Grand Tans put okay for the Rickers. No one uses drift. Oh yeah, you think that? Carmen says brainstorm costs too much. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Uh, Bricks motion drift is trash, but no, no, he's trash. That's it. Grand time. Pipes in as bad as you think. I don't like any bot that rushes in. If they rush in, do damage behind them. They're not good. If they rush in with a shield and the shield disappears, they're not good. Because once that shield goes, they get hit and hit and hit and hit. And you might go, yeah, but they've got crazy health. So does Rook. But if you put Rook on a front line without a healer, he's going to get killed immediately. But he doesn't rush ahead. He stays with the pack and so he doesn't rush off. As soon as you rush it ahead with Pipes... Then if you, I don't get me wrong, if you rush sideways to begin back in line, I kind of get that could have a use. But you can't rush forwards with him. Not in walls, anyway. So, and uh, grind time. If you're that adamant, he's not that bad, then put him in your war team. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> um, Michael Cooper, has G1 core helped Skylinks much? I actually don't mind this G1 core. I actually don't mind it. It's actually all right. I would say it's amazing, but I've, I've been toying with it and practicing with it, with the four star, and it's not bad. It, but they're not going to fix him, it's his pathing that's the problem. It's the fact that he's a combat bot. Not a combat bot, but, you know, he's a, a, a frontline tank in a way, but he's not a tank. He ain't got the health as a tank. So, he can't go on that front foot. He can't. Yeah, definitely uh, the things have been changed by combat in S11 and stuff. My poly put back six is warrior heavy. With a stun immunity, would that change a little? No, I don't think it would. Goldfire, I think he's gone. I think Goldfire is dead and buried. I really do. MSMs, uh, I've made Goldfire obsolete. So, um, yeah, I don't make it, think I'm making a comeback at all. It was stun immunity. I, I use Rook on my team as a warrior, and that's it. But that stun immunity is like... I'm not even bothered, honestly. Um, Brian Miller's put, if MDS gets level 2 with HQ18, any little health bot is tough. I don't... I can't see it. Not in the early stages, anyway. Eventually, I think it will. Possibly, probably. Uh, but I think we'll see another outpost bot. I'm hoping we will. I'd like to see a fifth outpost. That'd be interesting. Um... But yeah, HQ18, that's another chapter of the day. My ideas. But yeah. Um, yeah, Carl put it's the shield ability that makes him good. Mm. Oh, you mean the. Um, oh, you mean with the into the hotspot and. Um, I think you mean hotspot and pipe, surely. Yeah, Berserk's put uh, Paul Bletswig and pretty disappointed. Yeah, honestly, I've said this. Should have kept on with Batch 8. Listen, I, I have said this to people in Psy. So as soon as that Batch got released, and people were like, oh, five-star Skylinks, yeah. And I think they were just reminiscing on when they used to use the four-star. And I've said this to the story a few times. Because it's honestly true. Grand Town backed me up. And um, I think some guys go mad about it. I was like, so I, I did some testing. I was like, okay, so... Skylinks can take out the MDS with two shots, something like that. This is before, I think before regens. Uh, could take out the MDS with two shots, could take out mortars with one shot. And all, all this. It's just the five star, and the five star still needs two shots to take the MDS out. You can't do it in one. So it still needs two shots. So same as the four star. But obviously the first hit, 
You could maybe use the first hit and then use smoky rather than using two hits. So you do have an advantage in some way. So it takes more health off, obviously. But that first hit doesn't kill it. So if you're just going to use Skylinks to destroy something, it still takes two hits, but it's a four star or the five star. Still got the same range, bit more DPS, bit more health. So I said to people, I said, is, your, is a four star in your war team? Oh, no, 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 no. His pattern's awful. The five star's no different, guys. He's still awful pathing-wise. It's no different, honestly. Keep that in mind that although it's more damage, it doesn't do much extra than the four-star does. If you've got a maxed out four-star, you don't need the five-star, really. You might for HQ18. That might change because if two four-star flame strikes uh, can't take out two defenses at HQ18, then the five-star probably will. But then once you level the four star to 65, so the question then is, would you rather level the 65 this level? Would you rather level the five star to 65, or would you rather level the four star to 67, which is looking what the cap will be? That's the big question. And invest in the four star. But who knows what HQ18 will bring, sadly. But um Yeah, that's why I don't rate Skylinks. Um Five Star Perceptor with his G1 and the Dino Gun. Try a shot. I'm not a fan of that either. It's great. Go test it. I will. I probably Penny Lassler, Lancaster. On your recommendation, I will test it. Listen, I am really open to being change my perception. <laughs> my perception. On Perceptor. Tex loves Perceptor. I mean, I argue with him every time over it. Not argue, but you know, we have a discussion and I'm like, no, no, it's awful. There's a few people that swear by him, but I've never found him useful at all. I've never wanted him in that batch. It, it, listen, if he is that good. I'll probably pull from batch 5. Because then there's only one bot I don't want. And that is Mortar Master. Because I've got cheap so I want to clear out combiners. But I don't really want to do that. So, yeah. I'll give it a test. I'll give it a test. Oh, no, no, no. I'm gone. What did I just see? No, no. Berserk's just put. Pipes and Rhinox are similar. No, they're not. No. I'll tell you why they're not similar. Okay, I get that they both rush in. But Rhinox does damage in an area. Pipes doesn't. Not, in a, not, not as much damage as he does anyway. Not as big an area, I don't think. But definitely not the same damage. Rhinox heals himself. Without any cause, without anything else, he heals himself. Pipes doesn't. And with Rhinox's G1 and an outpost, you get two ability uses. Even if he's just in a war. If you rush in and he goes below 40% health, is it? He reactivates his ability to just double the damage. So you get two ability uses out of one. There's no bot in, on this game that does that. Yeah, with Vector. But you put Vector on. You get three ability uses out of it. So, you get on going with it. Rhinox with his Transmetal and that Chicken on a Stick is one of its own. That, that's Terax, by the way. I best correct that. Because everyone would be like, who the hell's Chicken on a Stick was it? Um, but yeah, Rhinox is immense. Better than Pipes, without a doubt. That's, ugh, that's crazy talk. Um... Matt Paul is, but the um, hotspot is a staple of his team. With the age and reflect, paired with damage, the op and stun mutate, he lasts well even in cyber. See, that's the, that's the difference as well. It depends on what level you're warring at. Obviously, the lower lower you go down, the more tanks will last. So, hotspot, when he rushes in, will last longer in cyber. Even longer in common gold league will be absolutely immense and so will pipes because they can't die but as you go up to prime league you find that these once them shields run out they die very quickly and your healers start to run off and it's very i'd like to say not everyone but i'd like to say personally when i do my wars it's very calculated i'd like to know exactly what everyone's going to do it doesn't always 100 got a plan but there's a plan there of this does that and that does this and that does that and the last thing i would want is my healers getting dragged anywhere Anywhere, I don't want the bot splitting. Um, I don't want a bot rushing off ahead. So yeah, the less your healers run around, you got to remember as well. When, when your healers are running around, it's not just a case the heat running around might get hit. When they're running around, they're not healing, so your bots are getting half the healing. As soon as your bots split, your bots are getting half the healing they had. So you pretty much lost the healer. So keep that in mind, guys. Um. Berserk, I think I need a warrior who does pushback, but other bots. Pushback? What do you mean pushback? What do you mean by that? I'm not sure what you mean. Grand Tan said he'll put pipes on his war team in an untracked war. 
That does it all. Uh, who's the better healing? Five star Hook or Octo? Uh, well, Octo um, Hook obviously because Hook is a healer and gives constant healing. In terms of the heal bomb, uh, Octo does more. It's like seven k healing, but for eight ability points, so it's three. It's three and a half and three and a half, so it's four and four ability points. Uh, Ratchet does it for four. Does like four and a half k for four. So yeah. But then for two ratchet bombs, it's 10 ability points. But then you get damage out of Sandstorm and Octone as well. So it's a bit different. But it's just it's just costly though. It's just that eight ability points, which is a lot of healing, a bit of damage. But sometimes you don't want to use eight. You know, four from a healer is suffice. But then don't forget, once that ability's been gone and used, you don't get any more healing. Whereas with Rook, uh, with uh, Hook, sorry, and Ratchet, once you use that heal bomb, they carry on healing. That's where they got advances. They're a healer, so yeah, you always get more healing out of them. Um, Ramjet and Vector is still good. Well, yeah, I think they're going to fix the MSM mines. You know, I can't see them not doing. Cool. Maybe. Uh, Bazook was aiming for Guy Hawk Ripper Snapper. Yeah, Ripper Snapper, the best solo bot in the game. I probably agree with that. Definitely up there. Up there with likes of Cup. Elita. Even Skylinks and Jetfire to fair. Yeah, I use them for Zen Farm and stick out the HQ direct. Clear an area with a combiner. One shot the HQ in zone 14, so. Brian Miller's put that five star Skylinks is on his war team, hoping to eventually pull something to replace him. Yeah. Again, yeah, he's okay, but it's his pathing. I can get the MDS done cheaply, but then he wanders off from everyone. Yeah, that's that's the point. That you know, Skylinks is very good, very good damage, but he wanders off. That's his problem and dies. That's his problem. So, if you want to use him at the start of a battle to clear an area, yeah, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. It's probably one of the best bots to do that with. You know, if you want to take out an MDS that's got anti air, probably the best bot to do that with. But it's like a sack bot. You can then write him off pretty much. He's gone. Um. Welcome back, TTV. Grind size put Skylinks equals Afterbreaker. You mean it's in like they just use like a sack bot, you mean? Yeah. Then like I spot I'll shoot you mines gear. And I hated him. What? <laughs> uh Bricks Motion, I love both Percy and Blade of my raid team. Yeah, that's the point. You see, I suppose if you do raids a lot, then yeah, Perks is amazing. I never do raids. I hate raids with a passion. They could remove raids from the game right now, and I would not bat an eyelid. I'd probably be happy. Replace it with something else. I hate raids. It's just really, really boring. Um, the next four, I agree. Oh, it's just your, uh, your reliance members about pipes. Uh, Trans just maybe my favourite bot. Yeah, he's definitely up there. Very, very good bot. Uh, in terms of Lagoon leveling, as well, crazy, crazy good. And the prize put, should I try for Rhinox? Listen, anyone that's got shards right now, guys, save them. Save them for the new batch. You don't know who's going to be in it. Well, we do know. Well, we do, yeah. <laughs> we know Minerva's in there. We know SG Jetfire's in there. And we know that um, Sitsko and Trigger Happy will be in there. So, uh, Minerva Flatline, SG Jetfire, SG um, Thundercracker. And um, Trigger Happy and Six Gun will be uh, in that batch without a doubt. Um, but I'd wait to see if the other two are first. Or if you know you want one of them three. If you know you want Six six Gun, then uh, obviously save your shards. I've got uh, 20k shards. But, uh, I'm going to keep mine and wait and see what comes up in this batch. But um, yeah, where would I, if I was placing this batch right now, as far as, as they are, I'd put uh, Minerva and Flatline as fives. Without a doubt, I'd put them right up there. Um, six Gun Jigger Happy, I'd put them as a four. Very good one shot box. SG Jetfire and SG Thundercracker, I'd put as a three, you know. Yeah, they're good at one shots, but they're very, very expensive for jets. And they don't do much more than Jetfire does, really. They can't even one shot an MDS with self repair. So, and that's what you need. I, I can one shot them when they got attack cores on. It's the, it's the MDS with a repair core. But with ability 11, that could be a different story. 
Uh, so yeah, two fours and a three up to now, so decent. There's no fire in there. Again, there's no one that makes you go, I want to go for that batch. You know, people will hunt for Nor and maybe even Hot Rod. People will n hunt for Optimus Prime and hunt for Wheeljack. No one's hunting for Firefly and Blast Off because you've got uh, Batch 7, which is so amazing, with Jetfire in it. So that's a fallback. So you might as well go for Jetfire. And if you don't get Jetfire, there's no bad butt, bad butt in that batch. So no one's hunting anyone in Batch 3, really. Batch 4... Yeah, you can't not hunt Blaster, honestly, in Soundwave. If you haven't got them yet already, guys. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. I would not be at the place where I am now in my the league I'm in without them. Plain and simple, guys, honestly. Um, uh, Ratchet and Hook, Elita. People will chase them. They will chase them bots. So, yeah, crazy, crazy good. But Warpath, people will chase without a doubt. There's no one in Batch 6 to chase. People will chase anyone in Batch 7. Most of them are worth chasing. I think some people might even chase Smoke, so it might even be worth saying there might be a 4 Smoke screen and Breakneck for that reason. Everyone's worth chasing in Batch 8. Some people will even chase um, Swoop for Outpost duties. Batch 9? I wouldn't chase anyone. I'd pull from Batch 9 if you had some spares, but I don't think... I think Grand Time will agree that both of us don't use any of them bots in our war team. So... Out of all these bots, war team wise, I've got one from batch two. I've got two from batch four. I've got one, two. I've got four from batch seven. Small screen's not on my war team, believe it or not. I've got but all the other four are. Four from batch seven. I've got three from batch eight. And one from batch nine at the minute with slash, and that's it. That's it all, really. A lot of my war team is batch seven and eight. Yeah. High classifier said space should add bot synergy. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt, they should do. They did. They did grind time. They did talk about it a while back, but nothing came of it sadly. Um. Two things. Why does Blur's hollow push them around? It's the glitch. They need to fix it. Uh, when are we getting 5 star punch at 11? That's a lot to ask for, isn't it? <laughs> um, they will not bring out a 5 star punch and a build 11 all at once. Unless they really, really want to improve a bot. Uh, it's normally an awful bot. Something like Ironhide they might do it for. But I know, well, you know, it's what I'm getting at. Um, but yeah, it's got to be a really, really poor bot to have a build 11 and in a batch. They normally do one or the other, really. Um, let's be... Fixed motion put who am I missing? I'm not missing anyone, I've got them all. Um I've got all of batch seven. But I don't really use smoke screen in wars. It's just it's hell for just wanders off or dies. Highly classifiers put Rhinox equals Godlet. Yeah. Uh TTV tried for yes, I do play TF on PC, but keep in mind guys that if you want to play Earth Force on PC, you need blue stacks uh, to play it. Uh, or LD player blue stack is better though to be fair I've tried them both but don't forget that it's not supported by space tape so if you're going to want to do in your PC and you need recovery code don't tell them for your PC yeah tell them you want it for you can you change your phone or something but give me a recovery code it's fine it's not like it's a massive secret or anything but it depends who you talk to some people might say yeah there's a recovery code it's alright some will say sorry we don't support PC so the best is to lie to them and just say listen uh, can I just can I change my phone and use it on the PC? Um, and yeah, if you need some help setting it up, then hit me up. But it's pretty easy as long as you've got Blue Stacks and you've got Google Play on there. It's pretty simple, guys. Pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, people sometimes use PC to do hacks, things like that. But keep it in mind, guys. That if you get caught using a hack, then you lose your account. It's it's not really worth it. Keep it in mind, guys. Um, Penny Lancaster sent me the five star picture set. I'll have a look. I will. Um, Quite says for all three uh, great bots. Which three? Which three? Oh, Blaze, Jetfire, and Minox. Yeah, they are all good. Yeah. They're four stars because they're five star. We'll about that. No, four star jet fire is not as good as five star jet fire. Are you are you mad man? Are you mad? <laughs> uh yeah, Berserk, I have five star glitch. 
I have smoke screen. We can uh, go into the game actually. Let's have a look. Can't count. Uh. Try something else. Oh, you see me? Wait. <laughs> yeah, basic blue stacks is an emulator, so it emulates an Android. So yeah, we need a decent PC to run it. You need some good memory. It can get a bit glitchy if you don't. I had an old PC I tried it on and it just didn't work. It was quite an old PC though. G1 Ironhide and Silver are the worst cores in the game. Yeah, probably a big motion, probably. But yeah, like I said, I'll show you my small screen. My small screen is pretty much maxed out with these G Metal G1 with a five star glitch and still not on my war team. Still not. Grand Tides for today a giveaway. I did a giveaway. You won. <laughs> I did a giveaway. <laughs> oh, you meant that the uh, uh right, okay, got you. Yeah, 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 you're right, right time, yeah. I get people saying like oh after break it would stay alive and come back to the launch pad and it wouldn't be a sacrifice, but Yeah, but imagine Goldfire becoming a five star but without any more damage because after break don't do any damage, let's be honest. Hardly. So what you know take away the damage from gold fire why would you have a five star instead of a four star the extra health it makes no sense to me berserk said he runs breakneck on his secondary war team it was it was a second war team who was the time to make a second war team not me but uh, yeah there's my setup that is my setup for smokey and he still does not get in my war team. And just to prove a point, guys. So, Sea Spray, top shot. Bumblebee, top shot. Jetfire, top shot. Blades, black. They are the, all the gunners that are on my war team. That is it. Top shot or flak. Is LOR solid four or high four? High four. It's on my war team. Crazy, crazy good. Crazy good. Chris Mosh is asking to win a giveaway. Listen, I do giveaways all the time. All you got to do to win a giveaway is be one of the first in the chat. Best way to do that is be subscribed, guys. You know when I stream. You know, I stream the same time every week. So once it gets about half an hour before the stream, get ready. Get ready for me, uh, you know, coming live and getting that chat early. And then if I don't do giveaways... For that, I'll normally do crystal giveaways. So you can pretty much guarantee that if I don't do a giveaway early on, I'll do a giveaway later on for something. So uh, just keep that in mind, guys. That uh, you know, If I don't do first five in the chat, it means I'm doing a giveaway later on. And that's normally a crystal video where you just got to guess how many four stars that I'm pulling. Whatever, something like that. But, you know, we all make giveaways in, in uh, most streams. Um... Oh, Rob Smith put, since your last bit, I got, I got a spire drive. I've literally had a conversation with someone today who was saying, like, can help with the war team. And it's helping them, and it's like, get rid of fire drive. Drop five star fire drive and put in four star flag. They're like, what? I was like, yeah, honestly. They're like, yeah, but it does so much damage. I went, yeah, and it'll do so much walking off as well. It'll do so much walking off. Don't bother. Quick smoke should put six in the chat. Oh, should have been a bit faster than fifth. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, definitely Liz Optimus. Definitely, definitely a good bot, without a doubt. Brian Miller's put set your stream start during my drive home. Hey, listen, sometimes, um, so when Engineer Hoy streams, sometimes I'm in work uh, the next day. Um, so what I will do is on my way to work, I will put his stream on over the car radio and just leave it in my uh, sort of, you know, my well. And listen to uh, his stream or listen to Grind Time stream on a Monday morning because I work Monday mornings as well. So, you know, listen, guys, you can uh, put the stream on as you drive home and just uh, listen to it in the car. That's what I do a lot of streamers. Listen to it when I'm in the car. So, yeah. Uh, 
Ross missed, but then I put, got Sweep for a new 5 star. Well, you look at it too. Well, Sweep's not bad. He's not awful. Great in an outpost. Swoop with ability 11 is amazing in an outpost. Probably top 10. Probably top 10 outpost bots. But I get that people, you know. You know. People want bots that they can use in wars. Not just outposts. I can use for both. And you probably can use Swoop. But just his health is an issue. It's not a bad pull though. But you know, you got to think as well. You get that one out of the way. You've not got a bad pull now after that. All the rest are good. Yeah. And Hoss is what I'm doing that right now. There you go, guys. Yeah. That's what I do. Just, uh, you know, put it on the car. Press the radio. Or just leave it on loud. Speak whatever. And just, yeah, just chill, chill and listen to it. You know. And then, uh, yeah, you can always watch it later on. You can always watch it on replay, can't you? It's always there, guys. So, yeah. And don't forget, guys. If you miss it as well. I always try and snip videos out and post them. But you miss this sort of this little bit of interaction. And these questions. You, you know, you miss that in the videos. The videos for people that don't have the time to watch the stream. So, um, you know, I'll still post them sort of like little snippets. So you'll be able to see the bot rating and the, the uh, using Slash uh, in a video. But you won't get the whole experience. <laughs> yeah, good point, Brian Miller. Swoop could be uh, valuable. Come combines, yeah. Yeah, Rook and Sea Spray are really good. Still really, really good. But yeah, honestly, like... If I pulled Swoop, I would level him for an outpost. With ability 11, though. You need you need ability 11. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy good. Honestly, like, really good. Really, really good outpost bot. So don't be too discouraged. The, the reason... It, yeah. That's why it probably wasn't high, though. Because that's all I'd use it for as an outpost bot. And for leveling, maybe. But yeah, just crazy damage. Like, just looks like, you know, like a thousand DPS. With my four stars. Pretty high. I used to use them a lot, the four star. But uh, yeah, 600 DPS and 10k health for a four star. So you're talking at max by 15, 16k health for swoop. So yeah. But don't forget, yeah, so ability 11 is EMP to whatever it hits. So everything it hits gets EMP'd. So in an outpost, everything gets EMP'd. It's like a mini chromia because it stays up there for ages, just spinning around, doesn't it? So yeah. Thanks for the cheer up. Yeah, well, listen. There's a lot of bots out there that have a good use. You know, they have a good use. Doesn't mean they're good at everything. The best bots are the ones that are good at everything. Rook, great in an outpost. Uh, I don't want to get back up again, but Rook is great in an outpost. Blaster's great in an outpost as well. That's why they're considered so godly and so good. Nor's great in an outpost. You know, they're good for everything. You know, Warpass is that good because he can hit a Titan as well. He's the only bot in the game that could do that. You know, there's certain bots out there that. They're the only ones could do it, you know, and that's why they're so good. There's certain bots that can just do everything. They're good on outposts, they're good on attack, you know, so that's why they're rated so highly, you know. But, uh, yeah, listen, there are people out there in Prime League that use Swoop in their war team. I just find it a bit squishy. Same as Smoke Screen, though. So, there are people that use it, so don't get too discouraged. It's definitely usable, without a doubt. Don't forget, 3 is not awful. 3 is, like, pretty good. But not awful. So yeah. Yeah, Michael Cooper's put on the hit on the head there. Sweep in outpost with a build eleven. With his G1. Boom. Honestly, it will improve your defense a lot. Really will. Okay, well, I think that is us uh done for tonight, guys. So uh just wanna say thank you to uh everyone for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And, uh, <laughs> you may recognize the music in the background. It's, uh, the music to my, uh, my advert for my channel. I just realized that's the actual music that I used. There you go, little, uh, little Easter egg. But, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Really appreciate it, guys. Don't forget to hit me up on Discord if you want to subscribe to the Stash Crystal, and we'll be giving them out in about 12 or so hours time when I go to bed and get up again. Um, but yeah, don't forget, we still stream every single uh, Monday, guys. Um, a bit of a play stream. You can come and join me, ask any questions, and let's do a bit of Titan Assault or whatever, or a bit of Zen Farming, and answer your questions, let's have a chat, basically. Um, and then Thursday, we sort of pick up some topics, basically, that I want to talk about, people have asked me for. Um, 
and then cover the news and stuff. So yeah, so uh, yeah, join me next Thursday for another stream. Join me on Monday, and uh, we will see you there. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. If you want to join in our streams, and uh, yeah, we'll see you then. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and peace out.